Hello everyone, got a few dirty jokes for you today. So a nurse was taking care of a soldier in the army hospital. How I wish I could kiss the American flag before I die, the soldier said. The nurse was extremely touched by the soldier's patriotism and said, I have a tattoo of the American flag on my bottom. You may kiss it if you don't mind. Of course, I wouldn't mind. Thank you for fulfilling my last wish, the soldier said. The nurse took off her pants and the dying soldier kissed the flag. Thank you, nurse, he said. Now would you be so kind as to turn around so that I could kiss Bush too? <laughs> so two children were in a doctor's waiting room. The little girl was softly sobbing. Why are you crying? Asked the little boy. I'm here for a blood test, and they're going to cut my finger, said the girl. When he heard this, the little boy started to cry. Why are you crying? Asked the girl. The boy looked at her worriedly and said, I'm here for a urine test. <laughs> so when NASA was preparing for the Apollo project, they did some astronaut training on a Navajo Indian reservation. One day, a Navajo elder and his son were herding sheep and came across the space crew. The old man, who only spoke Navajo, asked a question, which the son translated. What are the guys in the big suits doing? A member of the crew said they were practicing for their trip to the moon. The old man got really excited and asked if he could send a message to the moon with the astronauts. Recognizing a promotional opportunity for the spin doctors, the NASA folks found a tape recorder. After the old man recorded his message, they asked the son to translate. He refused. So the NASA reps brought the tape to the reservation, where the rest of the tribe listened and laughed, but refused to translate the elder's message to the moon. Finally, NASA called in an official government translator. He reported that the moon message said, Watch out for these guys, they've come to steal your land. <laughs> so Rick signs up with the army and gets sent on basic training. When they are handing out rifles, he is at the back of the line and they run out just before they get to him. The sergeant gives him a stick and tell him to just pretend it's a rifle. So our hero goes running through the mock battle pointing his stick and yelling, Bangity, bang, bang, bang. Bangity, bang, bang, bang. The next week, they start bayonet training. Again Rick is at the end of the line and again they run out just before they get to him. The sergeant tells him to just pretend he has a bayonet at the end of his pretend rifle. So Rick goes running through the mock battle with his stick yelling, Bangity, bang, bang, bang. Stabity, stab, stab, stab. Well, the unit finished basic training and gets called up to go into real battle. Our hapless hero finds himself eventually on a landing craft, hitting the beach. Unfortunately, they have never given him a real rifle and he still has his stick. He is wondering what in the heck he is going to do. As the unit fights his way inland, Rick mindlessly points his stick at an enemy soldier standing on a hill and yells, Bangity, bang, bang, bang. To his amazement, the enemy soldier falls over dead. So he aims his stick at another and yells, Bangity, bang, bang, bang. And an enemy falls over dead. Now our hero is running madly along, pointing his stick at any enemy soldier he sees, yelling bangity, bang, bang, bang. Enemy soldiers are dropping like flies. An enemy jumps out from a bush beside him. Rick points his stick and yells, stabity, stab, stab, stab. The other guy drops and writhes in pain. All of a sudden an enemy soldier comes walking slowly along a path. Rick carefully aims his stick at the soldier and yells, Bangity, bang, bang, bang. 
But the enemy soldier just keeps coming. Rick tries again. Bangity, bang, bang, bang. Nothing. As the enemy soldier gets closer, Rick cries out, Stabity, stab, stab, stab. But the enemy soldier runs right over him, crushing him. As Rick lies dying, he hears the enemy soldier muttering, Tankity, tank, tank, tank. <laughs> So a government employee sat in his office and out of boredom decided to see what was inside his old filing cabinet. He poked through the contents and came across an old brass lamp he's never seen before. This will look good on my mantle, he said, and took it home with him. While polishing the lamp, a genie suddenly appeared. Noble sir, he thundered. You have three wishes you may ask of me. All right, said the government clerk. I would like an ice-cold Coke right now. He gets his Coke and drinks it. Now that he can think more clearly, he states his second wish. I wish to be on an island with beautiful women who find me irresistible. Suddenly, he's on an island with gorgeous women eyeing him lustfully. He tells the genie his third and last wish. I wish I'd never have to work again. Instantly, he was back in his government office. <laughs> For decades, two heroic statues, one male and one female, faced each other in a city park, until one day an angel came down from heaven. You've been such exemplary statues, he announced to them, that I'm going to give you a special gift. I'm going to bring you both to life for 30 minutes, in which you can do anything you want. And with a clap of his hands, the angel brought the statues to life. The two beautiful figures approached each other a bit shyly, but soon dashed for the bushes, from where shortly there could be heard a good deal of giggling, laughter, and shaking of branches. The angel, as pure as he was, couldn't hold a somewhat less than holy curiosity, so he crept close and peeked beyond the bushes. He saw the two of them standing strangely, holding a pigeon. Grinning widely, the female statue turned to the male statue and said, Great. Only this time you hold the pigeon down and I'll do my business on its head. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>